Hi, welcome to Fiber Chats. Today I have a very exciting group of experts on my channel. I have members of the Knitting Guild Association, and with us today, the President and Executive Director, Aranda Holiday, uh, Vice President of Education, Heather Storter, and you've seen Heather on my channel already for her personal interview as well as Vice President of Public Relations, Donna Astin, who you also know and love from my channel. <laughs> Welcome, ladies. It's a great honor to have all of you here today. Thank you, Arena. Thank you. It's good to be here. So today I want to talk to you about the Guild, and a lot of people know about the uh, Knitting Guild Association. However, they think most people know about the three-year program, Handmaster Nita program that the Guild offers, and not everybody knows about all the other benefits of being a member of the guild. And I was among those people until very recently when I decided, you know what, maybe let me look more deeply into what the guild offers. And I went and I joined and it's two seconds procedure. You just click on like you answer your name, you are some, some minimal information and you pay $35, I believe, for the annual membership. And then you have access to all the what guild has to offer so what was surprising to me is that not only there is master hand knitter certification but there is a bunch of different certifications so i saw that you can become a professional knitter knitting instructor tech editor knitting judge knitting designer there are also a whole variety of mini classes. I had no idea about that. I didn't know that the guild is teaching mini classes and it's everything from like perfect cables and how to knit simple lace into the more technical aspects of knitting. So let's talk about that. Tell me a little bit about the history of guild and how it evolved until what it is today. I've been involved with the Knitting Guild Association since the, well, probably the 2000s. Uh, I joined because I was a crappy finisher. My stuff, you know, my knitting was good, but my finishing was lousy, and I'd have to issue instructions on how to wear anything I knit for someone, like the hat has to go this way because it was so ugly. And at that time, the Knitting Guild was kind of an offshoot of a management company, and their primary focus was to have conferences. This was before the big conferences started. They kind of had the, the you know, monopoly on that. And they also published a magazine, a knitting magazine, Cast On, which we still publish. And they decided back in the 80s, 1980s, to start the Master Hand Knitting Program. And along with that, some courses for people who were interested in doing the master's program, but felt they wanted to take some classes to prepare for that. So for basic knitting, finishing, um, there's a variety of them. And we still offer most of those courses today. Well, in 2016, uh, the management company that ran the Knitting Guild Association basically went bankrupt and told those of us on the master hand committee that they were going to dissolve the organization. So we felt terrible because all of these people were working on the program and had spent money and time to get the title of master knitter. And we felt we couldn't let that happen. So a group of five or so of us banded together, got a nonprofit status. We had the intellectual property of the organization and we've been expanding on that since. Initially, we were just able to produce the magazine. That was all we could do. But then we added a virtual conference and then a retreat. And we've continued to add certification programs. Um, as you mentioned, Irina, uh, we have a professional uh, knitter certification, which is uh, for those that don't want to do the master's program. The master's program is very time intensive, a lot of research, a lot of knitting. And some people just want to have their knitting evaluated. And it also fulfills a need in the knitting industry because um, when I became the editor of the magazine, I realized that most of the samples that people were producing uh, were not that great. And so I started to investigate with yarn companies and designers, and they were experiencing the same problem, uh, the difficulty of photographing a 
shoddily knit item. And so the purpose of that certification is to help train someone who wants to do sample knitting. But anybody could do it, and you have your knitting evaluated. Um, one of our most popular courses is the tech editing course. And tech, uh, those people are born, they're not made. But if you do have the skills to do it, Heather can talk about it, because she is a tech editor. Uh, it is a great program. And the instructor is the tech editor for Cast On, and she does a really great job with that course. There's the Knitting Instructor course, and it's taught by Leslie Gonzalez, who is the advisor to the Master Hand Knitting Program, but you don't have to be a master knitter to do it. Um, and it just guides you through the process of preparing a class, how to present it, so on, so on. Um, then there is Donna's classes, her certification program for designing, which I wish I'd taken it, it would save me five years of my life and made things more easier. Um, and then there's the knitting judges. I don't know if in some parts of the country, uh, fairs are very popular and people have um, the knitting uh, categories. I've been the knitting judge a couple of years for our state fair here. And you really need to have people who are trained to do that because until I took did it, um, they had a quilter. You know, what they know about knitting could be put in a thimble for most of them. So, And then in addition to the certification programs, we have a lot of just courses that people can take. Um, I teach a basics class, which is kind of a gateway drug to the master's program, to be truthful. It kind of prepares you and lets you know what you're in for. And if you are thinking of the master's program, it's not a bad idea because it can save you time if you decide you don't want to do it. Um, I teach a finishing course, which... That's my passion in life is good finishing. Uh, a gauge course, uh, there are, Heather is in charge of all of the courses. So why don't you talk more about the courses that are available? Yeah, so we, we have several uh, correspondence courses. And these are courses that where you work one-on-one -on -one with an instructor, um, a master knitter. Um, and there are multiple lessons. So the correspondence courses are a little beefier. Um, you have multiple lessons and you're covering a kind of a broader knitting topic. So Arenda teaches the basics, basics, basics correspondence course. And uh, right there in the name, it covers pretty much the basics of uh, knitting, hand knitting, and is a, is a great gateway for um, if you're interested in the master hand knitter program but aren't quite sure, you can get that reassurance, one-on-one -on -one feedback in a more kind of safe zone, if, if you will, um, and build your confidence for pursuing the master hand knitting program, but you don't have to pursue the master hand knitting program if you don't want to. Some of the other uh, correspondence courses, um, their uh, Taming Tension is taught by Binga Swan and if you're struggling with your tension, that is a fantastic correspondence course to take. She does a really good job of working with you to figure out exactly what your specific problems are and what you can do to try to fix it. Um, there's a pattern writing correspondence course. If you're interested in writing patterns and you want to know what goes into making a really good pattern, um, Nancy Summit teaches that one. And um, yeah, then uh, Donna also has a marketing course, correspondence course. So if you are working in the industry or want to work in the industry for whatever aspect, uh, as a designer or a tech editor or whatnot, uh, that's a fantastic correspondence course for learning the, the skills to market yourself well in this industry. Um, in addition to the beefier correspondence courses, we also have a whole slew of mini courses. So with these, you are also working one-on-one -on -one with an instructor, a master knitter, and they focus on a more specific technique. And they, are, they consist of one lesson that's maximum of like five swatches and, and a few questions um, that you answer, but you have access to your instructor. And some of those are, um, there's one on picking up stitches. So, so they focus on very specific 
knitting techniques where you may want to have your work evaluated. Um, beautiful joins, so places um, where underarm seams or thumb joins. Um, seaming bound off edges, I think Orenda teaches that one. Um, knitted increases. Um, and various cast on and bind off courses, focusing on specific cast ons and bind offs um, and things like that. So, yeah, we have a wide range of correspondence courses where you have access one on one to a master hand knitter to focus on larger knitting skill sets um, over the course of multiple lessons. They're usually about three lessons for the correspondence courses or more kind of bite size, if you will, um, mini courses focusing on a more specific technique, but you still have one-on-one -on -one access to your instructor while you're working on those courses. And those mini courses are such like, um, they're like $35 yeah. per class and it's yep. just minimal time. You, yes. just, you pick a topic, you you kind of perfect that topic and I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. To me, the most enticing thing about all of that is that not only you get one-on-one -on -one with hand master knitter because, you know, like we all on YouTube and you can see some of the YouTube tutorials are correct ones and a lot of that are false information and they'll teach you something that's not really how it's done, right? So here you have, you know that you're talking with the knitting expert, but also that knitting expert went through all the hustle of learning how to become a hand master knitter. So they understand the trouble of like, you know, not knowing and learning. And so they're very sympathetic to your struggle. It's not a judgy situation because they've been going through that themselves, right? Yeah. I think that's one thing that people don't understand about us because the term that I keep hearing is knitting police. And that's not our attitude at all. Our mission statement that we had to get as a nonprofit, it's all about education. And you can't educate somebody if you're telling them, oh, well, maybe you ought to take up macrame because you're just not good enough to be a knitter. We do not have that attitude. We all went through it. We all had deficits in our skill set that we benefited from working with someone who actually knew what they were doing rather than trying to figure it out on your own. And I've been teaching the basics course since 2000. Eight. And I can tell you, I've developed some wonderful relationships with my students who still will contact me if they have a pattern question or something, because our attitude is not you're doing it wrong. It's I can show you a better way to do that. That's going to give you better results. And you're going to feel better about your knitting when you look at it instead of thinking, eh, I'll never wear this because. And we don't um, we're very careful in our selection when we're picking people to do our educational courses. They have to have that, I wanna help you. I'm not delighted I found a mistake in your work because that makes me feel better about myself. That's not who we are. We Maybe when the guild first started, and I think a lot of people got that attitude then, but we don't have that attitude at all. You know, we only have nice people. Um, and <laughs> part of that thing that I do like to point to people is that we work so well together. We have the same crew of people that have been working on this project and in the guild for some of us 10, 15 years. And we don't, our goal is to improve people's knitting. It's not to you know, stand out or to you know become masters of the knitting world. We really wanna help knitters. We wanna pass on what we've learned. And that's our real mission. Right. Well, recently I taught my very first class in lace knitting to my local knitting guild. And what I learned from doing this, it wasn't even a class. It was more like a show and tell presentation kind of thing. But what I've learned is that even things that seem to be so obvious to me that I thought every single person on the planet and their mother knows that, were new to some very experienced knitters. So it's something like about these classes that I'm sure you guys, as you teach those classes, you pick up some new topics that you can add to that class just from the questions that the people ask. Absolutely. Absolutely. My students teach me so much. Like sometimes I was recently teaching um, the professional 
knitter certification. And I had a couple of men taking the courses. And you just assume that everybody has the same knitting background. And I found things that were mysterious to them that made me reevaluate how I taught a lot of people. And I really, you learn every time you work with a student. And it's very, it's mutually beneficial. I think a lot of people, you know, come into the Knitting Guild or they find TKGA because they want to do the Master Hand Knitting Program because that is pretty well known. But so you join the TKGA, then you take the Master Hand Knitting Program and you work on that. But that's kind of almost backwards yeah. because there's so much other stuff you know, once you once you join, you know, you realize you've got the digital cast on with all the technical articles and the patterns. We have knit two together newsletter that comes out every month, which is, gosh, Heather is the editor. She's got, I don't know, sometimes like 15, 19 pages in that. It's like chocked full of information. And we have um, meetups. We have a member benefits program where we have discounts with all different it comes and goes, different knitting companies that come in and out. But I mean, with the money that I have saved <laughs> in shopping through the member discounts, I have paid them like annual fee over. So talking of member benefits, I'm about to start working on Stephen West's Mystery Knit Along this year. And it's going to start on October 3rd. And I heard that the Guild has a discount for Stephen and Penelope. We do. TKGA members can save 15% off West Wool yarns through Stephen and Penelope at their website. And West Wool is a line that uh, Stephen West has developed. And there's some amazing um, yarns in there. Glow hair is so cool. It's a mohair blend. There's tricycle. It's really cool. And so the you order, um, you can shop at Stephen and Penelope's website order there's a, a code for tkga members that you put in at the checkout which will save you the 15 percent off and that's good until october 1st and you can find that at tkga.org members will need to be logged in so you can log into member uh, resources and then click on member benefits to get the code i but just found the grand brand new reason to join <laughs> <laughs> and have fun with the yarns they look really cool so that's, you know, there's just so much that's to offer with the design contest, knitting retreats. We have the guild meetings and presentations, which are free for members every couple of months. So there's like this whole wealth of information on the website. We have all of the tech articles that go back with, which are really great articles with step-by-step -step photos that you have access to this whole database. So I think that, you know, Mo by f the master hand knitting program isn't for everybody and by far by far most of the knitters um the vast majority of members at tkj are not interested in the master hand knitting program at all i mean they're here just because they like to knit and they want to take their knitting skills to the next level and that's what they're kind of taking advantage of all these tools to help them do that and some of them may want to work you know professionally in the knitting industry with as knitwear designers or tech editors or um, sample knitters as or in a minute, but most don't. I mean, most of them are are they want their knitting to improve for their own their own um, enjoyment, you know, their own pride. I think you know you can get to a point where you can knit anything, you can follow any pattern, you can label yourself as an expert or advanced knitter. But if you're if every single project has just some little quirky thing, like the neck maybe is too tight or this doesn't look right or it's just something off about it. You're still going to wear your sweater or your shawl or whatever, but you know that's there and that makes you a little self-conscious. And it is so, it's such a good feeling when you produce something and you're like, wow, this is so awesome. Like I don't, there's not any glaring mistakes. I'm very proud of this. And, and when you have that pride, which comes from elevating your skills, uh, then I think you want to knit more. You want to keep at it. You want to knit more often. You want to really try different things. You expand your knitting repertoire. And, and, and if you were into cables, maybe you want to go into lace. If you're huge into lace, maybe you want to try something like brioche or slip stitch or all the, like all this other stuff that knitting has. But I think that's the key is it, it you know, we really um, speak to the knitter of of all levels who, who they just want to knit better. You know, they just want to learn the right way and they want to take it to the next level. 
Well, I mean, I have a funny story about that. So I have a very good friend of mine. He's uh, in New Jersey, neither Stephen Weber. He was a guest of my channel as well. And he has been knitting for probably like, I don't know, over a decade. I'm thinking more than that. And it's he is a teacher, English teacher in a public school in New York. And he told me, I want to take a certification course from the Knitting Guild about how to become a knitting instructor. And I was like, I thought out of all the people that I know, you would be natural at that. And he said, no, I think like because I'm a professional teacher, I understand that I'm lacking some skills and I'm like less self-assured about being a knitting instructor. And so I want to take this course just to have that assurance that yeah I can do that professionally as well so it's like different kind of people are drawn to it for different reasons but there is something for almost everybody there is and you know I think that beginner knitters or knitters that um, who have been knitting for a long enough to know that they like this they want to continue but they need they need some help in some areas. I think they probably benefit the most because of the amount of resources and support and help. And like Arenda said, I mean, everybody involved, once we go through the program, yeah, we can go on our way and and that's it. But the ones that are, are here teaching and staying and helping are doing it just because, you know, we want to share what we've learned. Well, another thing that I love about the Guild is that you have a lot of social aspects to it. It's not just purely for educational purposes. There is a huge community and you do a lot of meetups. One of them, by the way, is upcoming at Rhinebeck on Saturday, October 19th at 3 p.m. on the Hill. For those who know, no, I'll be actually on the Hill at 12, but then I'll come back at 3 to meet with you guys so if you want to just come and say hello and judge for yourself how friendly uh the guild me members are and just chat and get the feel of it um right back saturday october 19th 3 p.m yeah. on the hill heather will be there heather will be she's teaching at ryan back this year so she'll be the she'll be there meeting everybody that's how Heather and I first met. I was there in 2019 and I was taking Estonian lace class with Heather. So yes. that's how we met. Uh -huh. <laughs> but also this year, you guys doing something special and I'm very happy that I'm going to be participating in it and be part of that. So we are doing a knit along. And the knit along is going to start in January. And I'll tell you why January is such a perfect time to do the knit along because up until Christmas everybody is busy with making gifts for every single person in the family and by the way you don't have to make handmade gifts for every single person in the family but if you choose so you're probably stressing out right about now that you didn't finish that pair of socks or that hat and so go ahead and do that but on November 1st, the next cast on magazine comes out and in it is going to be a pattern for making your own cardigan. And the guild is organizing a knit along in January. It's going to start with a party on January 11th at 2 p.m. It's Saturday. So we're going to keep on posting more information about it. And I'm going to post some information in the description of this video. So you stay tuned for that. But we're going to start the knit along for cardigan designed by Jennifer Kent. And there are different options. There are different lengths of this cardigan. There is different sleeve lengths for the cardigan. So you basically are the master of your own cardigan. We're doing a meetup, well, a virtual meetup at the Next Level Knitting Conference first weekend in April. So everyone who is wearing everyone who worked on the knit along can do course of a show and tell and you know maybe an opportunity to talk about some of the different um flourishes that people added on their own or the the their little um things that they've added details and so forth and to show their own their colors their yarns and so forth that they're doing this and this is something that i think was it h and h arenda that we started talking about doing this and we um, we, we knew we wanted uh, a cardigan, 
um, without buttons. That seems to be sort of a turn off for a lot of knitters. And the open cardigans are just super easy. I mean, they're really easy to wear. And then Arenda had the idea, well, why don't, why not, instead of just doing one cardigan, let's, let's do options. Like let's have one with a panel with cables or, uh, and then you had the same, the same panel, I think with lace. Yes, yeah, so there's different options that everyone can choose for their vision of their cardigan. And also you mentioned that there are discounts uh, that the guild members get as far as the material goes. So Pearl Soho Marketing is the sponsor and yarn provider for this uh, cardigan. So they are going to offer 25% discount for members of the knitting guild. So if you guys are sitting there and admiring Pearl Soho uh, yarn, this might be an opportunity to jump on to that discount as well. And this, just to make clear for everyone, this is not for the hand master knitter participants. This is for all the members of the knitting guild. So all it takes again is for you to become a member is to pay this $35 annual fee and you're a member. The yarn that Jennifer Kent, who is the designer, is using is Clean Air by Pearl Soho and there she'll have two different samples shown with the different options one with the different different sleeve links and also one with the lace panels and one with the cable panels so you can kind of see which ones you know which ones you want to which ones you want to work on and then some options as you go through it and um, once we get the information on the you know, the discount we'll have that available all this will be on our website tkga.org and we'll have a whole page dedicated just to the knit along so I think it's going to be a lot of fun we're doing a like a rent a rent we're doing the launch party so we'll have we'll, there'll be plenty of time before then to get all of your materials together get the pattern get the yarn decide you know what which of the options you like um, so we're excited for that to come out on the first can't wait to see it and the official uh, announcement for the knit along is going to be in mid November. So you guys getting a completely like secret information. Don't tell anyone, but your best knitting friends that you want to join this knit along with, tell them. Yeah, you can, you can. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I, you know, honestly, the, we have been around, like Arinda said, forever, but um, this is our first knit along. So and, Jennifer, we are and Jennifer also is planning to do some mini tutorials. So she's going to show all the tricky parts so we can learn new techniques of how to do the proper finishing and everything. And I'm thinking, like, I never knitted a cardigan. It's going to be the first for me. So it's going to be my first knit along with the knitting guild. It's going to be my first cardigan. And I'm sure if I have questions, I have the best people to ask we're always available <laughs> yeah and i think arenda is going to do um on one of the um zooms at, with you at fiber chats arenda is going to talk about finishing right and um some of the tips on getting once you've gotten the bulk of this knit how to really make it look polished and professional so that you know you're you really want to wear it and and yeah so we're really excited about it. i think it's going to be a, a fun one to do this uh cardigan is going to be published in november uh issue of cast on magazine arenda could you tell us a little bit more about cast on magazine and what kind of information people can usually find in it yes i'm i'm the editor and um it's digital only comes out four times a year we announce to the uh, members when it's due and it's a very different kind of magazine in one regard. If you're a member, you have access, immediate access to every issue since uh, winter 2016 when we went digital. Um, any pattern that appeared, you can get to. Um, we have patterns of different levels. There's, you know, basic, experienced, or I think we call them complex now, intermediate, and all different types of yarn types. Um, the thing that makes Cast On most different is we have far more technical articles in every issue. We have series um, 
that we do in every issue. One's called Fashion Framework, where we'll discuss a specific type of garment. Um, we have Stitch Anatomy, where a certain type of um, stitch pattern cable in the upcoming issue, it's Bavarian Stitch or Twisted Austrian Stitches. Um, there are special topics in finishing, like putting in a zipper or, you know, weaving in ends in Fair Isle. That's what's going to be in the next issue. Um, we also have a new series that Donna ed does, which is uh, special topics in design, where she will discuss a particular type of garment that you might want to make and design it. Those are in every issue. We also just have anything that people wants to submit. Uh, baby patterns, men patterns, household goods, whatever you want, we have. But the thing that I am most proud of is that every um, issue has is indexed. So if you want to search for cardigans for men, you can do that. And every pattern that's been in the issue that is a cardigans for men or um you can find if you want to find technical articles on the mattress stitch you type in mattress stitch and a list of 20 articles are going to come up that you can look at so you have instant access not only to patterns but also to technical information for questions that you might have and we firmly believe that everybody learns a different way um, and so that's why we may do 10, uh, 10 articles over time on the mattress stitch because you may respond better to a certain writer's approach or whatever. So you have some choices. Uh, we are adding to, starting with this next issue, we are adding um, a search criteria where you can search for all patterns that are of a DK weight that are short sleeved um, or all experienced patterns or all basic patterns. And so you have real control over finding what you want to do and seeing what's out there. And also all of our patterns, we don't require, but we let our designers have input as they are writing their patterns. So if there's something they want you to know about why they're doing something a different way, they can put a note in. Okay, you may be wondering why I have you do this. This is why. Rather than trying to, um, sometimes it's like... Uh, reading the Dead Sea Scrolls, so you get a pattern, excuse me, uh, trying to figure out what the hell the person was trying to tell you to do. And so we give that as an option to our um, designers. We also allow them to put into the pattern video links. So if you're at that part of the thing and it says, this is the way you make this buttonhole, you can click on that link and immediately have instructions for doing it. So we've worked hard uh, to make our patterns not only um, fashion forward, and that is a moving target, as we all know, and we have so many different types of members that we like to give everybody something, the grandmas, the young people, the people living in different parts of the country, but all of our patterns will be educational. And by that, I don't mean you necessarily will learn something, but if there's something you don't know when you're using one of our patterns, you can easily find out what that is because we want our designers to put that in there. I, I have to, can I just say something real quick on that, Arenda, is when I started knitting, um, I had one, I self-taught, so I had one reference book, but I learned really everything from patterns, but I knitted from patterns pretty much in books and magazines, and books were limited because of the paper, and I, I knitted a lot from Vogue knitting magazine from the 80s and 90s, and um, if you remember, they would the, the patterns were very cryptic. I mean, there was, you would, they could have two patterns on a one eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, the whole thing. So um, I was honestly blown away when I saw some of the patterns in cast on because of all of these little notes that Arenda talked about, you know, you, it doesn't just tell you um, to, to do a technique. For example, on the, the, the back neck, it may say to bind off the stitches. And, and in the past, I would be like, yeah, I'm just going to put them on a stitch holder and pick them up and do the neck band because it's fast. So I don't want to bind off and pick them all up. I'm just going to put them on a stitch holder. Well, then in one of the patterns I was reading, bind it off because it'll prevent the sweater from sliding down your shoulders. It'll keep a nice um, firm neck there. I'm like, oh, that's why, that's why my sweaters are kind of falling out of shape. I never realized that. I just thought that I was being clever by doing all these shortcuts, but that that's, 
I, I find that I always learn something in the patterns. And that's kind of nice when you're knitting, not just to knit and blindly follow. But yeah, I mean, to just learn these little things that you can carry then through all your yeah. patterns, no matter what you're knitting from then on. Those are just little seeds of thought that kind of get stuck in your head that just help you. And I like the fact that you mentioned that there are different demographics. And I actually just met one of the knitters from my regular knit night. She's a college student and she's taking hand master knitter program and she gets college credit for it. So it's another way for youngest people to join the um, the guild and, and get some college credits from it. So you guys should ask your offices if, uh, if you can get a college credit for something you love doing anyway. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, boy, I wish I'd known about that. <laughs> Heather, can you tell us a little bit about the newsletter that you publish? Sure. We have a monthly newsletter. It's called Knit Two Together, uh, K2TOG. Um, and uh, once a month it comes out and it's chock full of lots of different things. So there are um, program news that we want to share about what's going on with TKGA or the Master Hand Knitter program or any of the other certification programs. Um, but also uh, we have Meet a Member features where recent Master Hand Knitters or recent professional knitters or other members that we want to feature, they get interviewed and we have um, a, a profile feature on them. Um, we have book reviews now and then. We'll have a pattern, uh, a small pattern now and then. Um, we do a monthly um, a monthly sweepstakes giveaway. Um, and so there's a there's a question prompt that we ask um, for you to send in your answer to the question and a, and a photo if you have a photo to share. And we randomly draw um, a winner each month and Arenda assembles a, a small prize um, basket or, you know, bundle of yarn and then that gets sent to our winners. So that's a fun, um, a fun thing that we have every month. And so then each month I share the prior entries um, with the photos and, and it's a great way to get to know some of our other members and to get ideas on on things and learn about you know whatever the question was of the month you know sometimes it's you know what's your what's your favorite um the upcoming one is what's your favorite charity knitting pattern so um our members enter and so we'll get to s learn about a bunch of different um really good charity knitting patterns that that our members enjoy using um what else we have guild chats now and then so our we have affiliate guilds and um, Debbie West will interview them and will feature them. So it's kind of a profile on our affiliated guilds around the country and around the world. Um, yeah, there's, there's, um, I, I'm finding that um, every month uh, the page number seems to creep up. Um, <laughs> so we're, we're, we're around, averaging around 20, 18 to 20 pages in length um, now, sometimes a little shorter, sometimes a little longer, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great. It's nice because it ties into everything that's going on. We do have a lot of stuff going on right now. I forgot we have the, the charity knitting drive, which we're doing now through December 3rd, and we're encouraging knitters just to knit. We have some um, details on our website as far as the type of yarn that you should use in the projects or the type of yarn that is accepted, like acrylic pretty much is what they want because it's um, it's easy to clean for um a lot of these projects will go to nursing homes, hospice, so forth. So that's at um, our website and we're, we're doing this along with Warm Up America. So the packages are actually being shipped directly to them and then they will send them out as needed. So it's nice that Heather was able to tie in some charity knitting patterns along to that. And we also have, um, I think this past issue talked about the knitting retreat, which we have mm -hmm. going on October 31st through November 3rd in Minneapolis. And that is an amazing in-person retreat. We still have some spaces open, actually, if you want to sign up. You, I think it's September 30th is the deadline. But Beth Brown Rensel is teaching, and uh, Faina Goberstein are both the instructors. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, you know, even if you're just 
like starstruck and you know their names and you just want to meet them. I mean, how cool is it to be able to spend the weekend with them and talk to them and learn from them? And yeah, I think that's a, a nice opportunity. Right. We also have a, an annual design contest. Um, and so uh, Leslie Gonzalez runs that. And um, those entries are due, I think, sometime in October. Um, but you also guys mentioned to me before we started that there is going to be a some sort of prizes for the participants of this need along, right? Yes. So we have, we're doing giveaways on all three of our little Zoom parties that we're having with Fiber Chats. And we're having some each, at the end of each um, Zoom session, we're going to be doing drawings for giveaways. And it's a wide variety of things that we're offering. Um, can't give away all the secrets now, but we are going to be having, I can let you know, some some little mini yarn bundles from Pearl Soho and some complimentary tickets to the Next Level Knitting Conference, um, a few other goodies. So, and it's for anybody who is at that Zoom on that day. We're just going to be taking a drawing, so that'll be fun. We like giveaways. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> yeah. I'm super excited about this knit along uh, and I'm sure it's going to be the most coziest and fun filled uh, Zoom meetings in January. So I hope you guys going to join us. All you have to do is be a member of the Knitting Guild and more information will follow. So stay tuned in November for all the details of how to get your yarn at the discount, how to join those Zoom parties, how to be eligible for the giveaways. And I hope you all going to join us. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you for being my guest today. It was lovely chatting with you as always. And I'll see you all at Ryan Beck or whoever I'm going to see at Ryan Beck and then I'll see you at yeah. the Zoom. In the, Just the keep, on keep on knitting. Keep on crafting, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.